probably for the rest of my life I'll never forget it especially because like I really even though I was sick didn't think I had it and when I seen that it said I was positive my first thoughts were oh my god my baby I tr we've tried so long for this baby and you go through your head and you think oh god did it, you know maybe I should have stopped you know just stayed at home and you know just didn't do anything or go out I guess it was, I don't remember the exact date, but um, it was the beginning of October, and I started feeling like I woke up, it was a Sunday, maybe the first Sunday in October, and I woke up and my chest felt tight, and like there was a little bit of a wheezing going on, and um, of course, because I'm pregnant and I read all the baby stuff, it says that at times you might get a post-nasal drip. So I thought that's what it was. In fact, I told my husband that too. And um, it lasted a couple days. Um, I scheduled a test for a few days later. And then it felt like I got a head cold and the chest kind of felt better. And then I got tested. And when I got the email, it said I was positive. And I was in shock, basically, when I got the results. I had doctor's appointments and you know you talk to your doctors they're just like okay just quarantine just stay home you know blah 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 so that's what I was trying to do and um, a couple nights before the day I went in I started like the breathing got worse <laughs> and like you, this shaking where you couldn't stop shaking and even at this point I was still gonna ride it out and then I remember waking up and that day it was hard for me to even do anything but um, I was worried about the baby so really the baby saved my life because I probably would have still and they say this turns around so quickly I probably would have not gone to the ER that day I remember my husband calling me and telling me that he's, I could hear in his voice he was crying and that they said I was about to be put on a vent and he's like, please, he's like, you gotta do something, you gotta get better. And so I knew I was close to it, but like I didn't realize until he told me like that, you know, and I don't know what changed their mind to this day. I don't know if even he knows or anybody knows, but they didn't put me on one and I'm just really grateful because it's just something I don't like not having control over my own body. So it's, I'm just glad especially with the baby like I just I'm just glad that you know I was able to not go on to have to do that I look back now and it was just the hospital staff was just amazing and I know you know everyone says you know how much you know we appreciate the nurses and the doctors but I don't even think that there's enough appreciation that could go out to them because actually experiencing it is a whole different you know story it's just that they really I mean they've got to be scared themselves to death but they just made me feel so comfortable and not scared You know, even though there's some times where I look at like, oh my God, like how this happened to me. You know, I'm pregnant, I'm about to give birth in a couple months, I'm on oxygen, like I had to take care of a baby and I start to get down. But then I think of all the people who aren't here and how bad this could have gone and just how simple just wearing a mask is, you know. And I know the survival rate for COVID is high and you can look at it that way if you want to. But even if you survive, like I said, I mean, I got lucky there are people who might have to be on oxygen for a lot longer than hopefully I'll have to be on. But I mean, I can't work right now. I can't do any, I can't care for myself. My husband has to do everything plus work full time right now. So it's hard. So even though you can survive it, but your life could be changed dramatically. When back in, you know, the beginning when they said they were going to start working on a vaccine, I said, absolutely not. <laughs> I'm definitely not going to get the vaccine. Um, now, after experiencing it, I, if it's okay, I don't know right now what they would tell me with the baby, but if it's not okay now, after, I definitely at some point, if it's offered to me, I would definitely take it because it, it was 
really bad. It was, a, it was really bad and I wouldn't want to go through it ever again. For the next few months, I, my goal is to stop not to need this anymore. And what's really hard about this also is the fact that there's no time frame because everybody's different. Um, I feel like I'm getting better every day. Um, I still can't function without the oxygen on at all. So that my main goal right now is to be able to get myself to, hopefully I'm due February 25th, hopefully not need oxygen um, by then so I could have the baby and, you know, be a mom. So yeah, so I just want to get back to being able to live a normal life again.